Well, what's good, YouTube and I? This is your boy DJ TiVo from the legendary Lords of the Long Box crew. Today, with a special edition of a uh, celebration, a say to soar, uh, say of sorts, uh, of Stanley's life, man. We want to just uh, kind of, it's not a memorial, as I like to say, it's a celebration of life because Stan lived his life to the fullest. So uh, later on, I got my man, Ken Lashley, he's going to join us. He's a superstar comic artist who, uh, who is going to share his feelings on it. My boy, Four Comics. Uh, is going to join us. He's a huge collector, big part of uh, Instagram. He's been on Jim Mint's show. Um, but first of all, I got my man Otto from the Grotto. Say what's up to the good people, Otto. What is up to all my Autobots out there? Finally, Sentinel Prime, the all-father, has joined the original Marvel bullpen. He's up there with uh, Mr. Jack the King Kirby. He's up there with Steve Ditko. He's up there with Flo Rubenstein. So we know the Marvel bullpen is up in heaven, watching over us, all our, all our comic book um influences and hopefully keeping the comic book world straight so we're here to celebrate that i think so that's really you know something fun and positive that we're going to talk about that's right i want to say what's up to everybody in the live chat shout out to big shout out to comic tom 101 and all the tomanites over there that have joined the live chat for over from his show wednesday is not only new comic book day but you got back-to-back -back shows with comic tom 101 and then you got the elder statesman the geriatrics of the tribe uh the lord the long box <laughs> crew my man dark side jedi holding it down in the live chat he's uh, still on the disabled list so that's why i got my and uh, for comics is hopefully going to be able to join us. And we're all going to talk about uh, how Stanley affected us. And, you know, he's probably wherever he is right now, uh, teaching people new words, because basically every word that I've gotten in my limited vocabulary has gotten from Stanley. Um, we lost truly a legend in our and pop culture, really, um, for those in the comic book community. We know him from the comic books and from the movies, from the, you know, people know him from the movies, the cameo, Stanley Soapbox, uh, all of the things that he's done. And maybe some of the things that you didn't know that he did that was, uh, that was, he was hugely popular or part of, I mean, it's, it's almost, I was driving home today. I live in Southern California. I was driving, uh, down the five southbound and, uh, there's a place, a little, uh, hood place called Santa Fe Springs as a swap meet, right? So they have a digital, um, billboard out there and it just said excelsior and oh i was like God. that was super fucking you know what that was really cool that and it just goes to show you i was watching like cnn talked about yeah. it. you know everybody talked about it. he uh, he was across all platforms so we're just going to celebrate the man's life talk about the things that he did and how it changed our lives and Otto, i mean uh what was your first impressions or what was your first i guess connections with stanley as a comic book fan or as a kid growing up yeah you know this stems back to um a long time ago when i used to read these reprints and i would read the reprints of the x-men and i would read you know the submariner that x-men i think that's x-men number five number three with the unity untouchable and i would look and i would see the you know the stanley i read the soap boxes i would do everything you know anything that all his stories were amazing you know um, Avengers number four, the first rebirth of Captain America. And his writing was so intense and it was so great to watch. And then to hear his voice on Spider-Man and the Amazing Friends was really what got me into it. And when I used to see pictures of it, he kind of looked like Burt Reynolds almost with the gold chains and it was like the late seventies and stuff like that. So he was uh, very iconic for me to see. And then to hear his voice and then to see all the things that he did later on and just to understand it. So I have to tell you guys, if it wasn't for Stanley, I probably wouldn't read <laughs> because I was a very poor reader growing up. I had a hard time with it. And when I was able to read comic books, I could see the pictures and stuff like that. So it was very easy for me to pick up. And those books um, reign in you know prominence in my, in my life. And even now today, as an educator, I have tons of comic books in my classroom. If my kids aren't doing anything, pick a, up a comic book, read this. I just had one of my students, I bought a bunch of those True Believers for a dollar. And I had that in my comic book and uh, in my classroom. And I made those kids read that. You know what I mean? Here, read this. This is fantastic stuff. So, And this is ironic. As a 47-year-old adult at my high school, I can't tell you how many teenagers, I'm talking freshmen and sophomores, came up to me and said, Mr. Hillman, we're very sorry about Stan Lee. And these guys know Stan Lee. So Stan Lee spans the generations of time. So it's, you know, 95. If I can make it to 95, punch my clock, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he led a full life. Yeah, you know me, man. I, I am not into celebrity worship at all. I, I live in right. Southern California. I lived in LA before I lived in Hollywood before. I don't know how many celebrities I've come across. And I have never, ever asked for an autograph or asked for a picture except for maybe a few. And it was maybe, um, it was James Worthy. 
Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I mean, you know, right. iconic things, right? That, you know, really, but like, I remember the first time I met Stan Lee, probably like four years ago at Stan Lee Kamikaze. And I was like, this is the first time I'd ever get to meet him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, sometimes you don't want to meet your stars, but to me, no. you know, as in his older age, you know, he was breaking down, but he had this innate ability to turn the switch off and on, or let me say, let me replace yeah. that. He knew the ability to turn it on, right? When he had to go in front of the stage to talk to his fans, he turned into the man, the Excelsior Stanley, but yes. behind the scenes, you could tell he was tired, but you know, he tirelessly did it for his fans. And I mean, we're not going to talk about all the drama that came in the later years. That wasn't even his no. attributed to him. It was the hangers on and things that was doing such. And, you know, and we were glad that he finally got to spend his last years at home signing books. And I believe that, you know, the cause of death was he was um, recovering or trying to recover from pneumonia. And when yeah. you're 95 years old, you know, any type of ailment to your respiratory system like that is 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 not good. It's, it's not good at all. Uh, speaking of not good at all, we, <laughs> we got my man is a little bit late. Uh, Dennis, can you hear us? I can, I'm better late. Oh, there we go. Better late than never. Hey, for everybody in the live chat, welcome. First time to the show. Long time OG IG member, my man, Dennis from 4Comics. Say what's up to the people. Thank you, guys, man. It's a pleasure to be on Lords of the Long Box. It's finally got my, my brief stint in Everett's Auto. I'm even being heard right now. That's right. Unbelievable, dude. It's fantastic. You are, your, your, your social media fucking cherry is popped all over the place. You are literally bleeding it. all over the place. So I was just talking. I asked Otto, and then I'll ask you, and then I'll add mine. And is what was your first um, real experiences with Stan Lee as, as, as a kid or when you finally found out who Stan Lee was and what he actually did and, and how old were you and how that, you know, influenced you as a young collector? I, I was I was into Marvel Comics young. Uh, obviously, uh, I, I saved up doing newspaper routes to get my first book. Um, and I, you know, I didn't place Stan on any higher of a pedestal than Kirby or Ditko. You know, they were it was the three of them in combination because they all had their own skill that went with it. And then, you know, kind of Dicko and Kirby had the similar skill, but mm -hmm. Stan had the way that he orchestrated it was just like, uh, was beautiful. But the first time that I realized that Stan was the guy who thought of all this stuff was probably about high school. And okay. uh, to think, I don't think that there's ever been a man that's ever thought of something that's not like, a, like, you know, Steve Jobs has an iPhone. It's tangible. You could touch it. Stan Lee created a world, that, and I don't think anybody's ever big. I mean, look at the size of Harry Potter, and Harry Potter is, you know, very minimal compared to Marvel. I think in the annals of history, I think now, I think in 50 Did years I from now, it? in this 21st century or 20th century, there will be two names that can, you can put side by side together. I'm not joking about this. It would be Walt Disney and it would be Stan Lee. For what that. they created for a generation of kids uh, and then who became adults, right? And if you think it's kind of funny that and Marvel ended up buying, uh, or excuse me, Disney ended up buying Marvel. But if you think about it, I mean, uh, you know, who else were singularly uh, responsible for building such universes? Like to me, you know, I started, well, I'm 47 now. So I started reading comics. The first uh, comic I ever read was Spider-Man comic. I was like in second grade. And I got these as hand-me-downs right from my uncle who would just give me these stack of Spider-Man comics. So this is like roughly like 79 or 80. Um, but when about 1983 is when Stanley's name really first, I was like, who is this cat Stanley? Because you know why? His voice was spoken to me through the Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man and his Amazing Friends cartoon. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. It was in. It wasn't in season one, but in season two and season three, he would do like introductions, and mm -hmm. he would, and then he started saying that word Excelsior. Right. That, that was my first introduction to Stan Lee because I absolutely love Spider-Man and his Amazing Friends. Right. right. I lost my shit when I saw like Doctor Strange and the X-Men oh on Spider-Man and his Amazing Friends. And I remember now when I did get, when I was younger, we were, we were poor. So when I got a comic, man, I would devour that thing from the cover to the back page. So I read everything in between all the adverts, everything. And Stanley soapbox, man, that's one yeah. of the first things that I remember was Stanley soapbox. And that kind of, he kind of broke the, the wall between the comic and the creator, right? Cause you know, besides the letters common section, this was Stanley speaking to you as the fan, right? Or what did he call him? Stan Stan's brig brigade brigadiers or what have yeah. you, yeah. and he was talking to us and and I I circled I, I I posted this on my Facebook. It was the famous 1968 post from Stan Lee, where he talked about um, 
civil rights and racism, and there's no place for it, right? I mean, this shows you in 1968, he was already thinking outside the box, thinking that, and I think, Otto, you talk about it on Mondays, and I think, uh, Dennis, you talked about it on Jim's show, how, for those who don't know, that the X-Men are basically a, a reflection of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby wanting to tell the story of civil rights, right? But they didn't want right. to bang you over the head with it overtly, right? So they do this story where basically, X-Men were the distant franchise. They were mm -hmm. the African-Americans. They were Hispanics. They were the whatever that was the downtrodden of that time and that era. And and uh, I found an article and I posted it that it's Kirby and Lee decided that they wanted to make a protagonist and antagonist. And they created per per Professor X and Malcolm X were the, were excuse me, Professor X and Magneto were the Martin Luther King and per, and Malcolm X of the civil rights movement. One was done by peace. I want to get along. And the other one was by any means necessary, right? right so that's right. Professor X is, you know, MLK. And then Magneto was Malcolm X. And I, and it's, it's even in articles when they asked Stan Lee about this years, years later and how he's, he drew that. And that's, that's amazing to me because you want to think about all the diversity and stuff in comics. Comics was created by, Let's be honest. They were created by Jewish guys, right? Who wanted to be at first they in World War during World War II, they wanted to be make anti-Nazi comics, right? Superman is the American goal to beat Nazis. Right. Captain America, Captain the America. American goal to beat Nazis, yeah. right? So for those who don't know, Stanley started for time. I, I think and Dennis, maybe you can correct me on this. I think he started on Timely Comics before it was Marvel, and he was doing like Two Gun Kid and some other Rawhide comic, right? Rawhide comics, the yeah. comic, yeah. Right, Dennis? Yeah, his, his first work in, in Captain America was also on Timely, though, as well. Right. Uh, was it Captain America 3? He did a page, and then 6, he did the whole book. And what's ironic is, uh, is I have a 6 right now at his house, and I'm not sure if it got signed <laughs> or didn't get signed. Okay. There's, there's a Hulk 1. 6.0, 5.5, uh, sitting at there, and there's that Captain America first book that he ever did sitting at his house, and hey, I don't know if it got signed. Or my not. stack is sitting with yours. I have four books right there. Um, um, who did you go through? Uh, Frightful Four. Yeah, I went through uh, Rocket Comics. So he was yeah, doing, a yeah, same. yeah, he was doing a private signing, and I spoke to Scott, and they're gonna find out, um, you know, uh, what's going on because wow. Stan Lee's managers are they are actual facilitators as well, so they witnessed the signatures because I don't think they were having a bunch of facilitators come by the house, so uh, it's no. interesting. Yeah, so I mean, we don't, I was telling Otto offline that you know we're not gonna talk about all the stuff that's happening right now with people price gouging and this and that. You know, we want to make this a celebration because. Oh, yeah, no. But I, I think in a couple of weeks, there's going to be some stuff coming out from all the hangers on and vultures. And you know, it's going to be sad. But, you know, I want to celebrate uh, the man's life. And like you said, it was it was Jack Kirby is is responsible for a lot of it. Steve Ditko is yeah. responsible for a lot. But Stan Lee had the gift of gab. He was the one yeah. that had to go out and market this stuff. Well, you know hold on, I mean? we, got, we got to correct. Dark Side Jedi is, try, is trying to tell me in the comments that that darn you for, for Lucas. I mean. You can't compare Star Wars to Marvel. <laughs> Are you, I mean, it's big. Yeah, it's well, big. Okay, you know, so, it's like a nine incher, but Marvel is a one footer. Right. It's a big <laughs> difference when it's coming in. So this is funny. When I was thinking about this, so this hit me kind of hard. You know, all my heroes um, are are pass have passed are passing away. You know, my mother, my father, my biggest heroes ever. Um, you know, uh, oh my God, Christopher Reeves, one of my all time biggest heroes. Um, Batman, one of my favorite heroes, passed away. Adam West, very sad about that. Now Stan Lee, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, and I'm, you know Steve Jobs too for what he did, um, you know, for all of our technology and stuff. But then again, I thought about who could be next. Like, and I'm like, could it be George Lucas? But I'm like, I can't put George Lucas on that pedestal just yet. I have to see what more the Walt Star Disney. Wars universe Walt has. Walt Disney would have to be who's next. Well, yeah, Walt Disney would. Yeah, Walt Disney's in that too. I apologize. Yeah. I mean, he'd have yeah. to because he created a, I mean, a multi-billion-dollar franchise that's yeah. still thriving, and actually so much thriving that it, that it ate Stan's world. Right, exactly. exactly. No, yeah, we were talking about that. Were you on the? Uh, were you on yet? When we were on, oh, I compared that. Yeah, you were. When I said Walt Disney and Stan Lee yeah. were kind of creators of the world, and you know but what was similar. interesting? When Stan Lee passed, a lot of memorials came out, and. It, it you could tell how influential Stan Lee was because Marvel posted about it, DC posted about it, uh, every publisher posted about it, even if he That's didn't right. do anything. You, you know, the, he wasn't he wasn't just for one, he was for all. It was right. all a comic. Probably Stan Lee wasn't an ambassador for, for Marvel comics, he was an ambassador for all comics. You know for what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you know, and it's amazing. He's the voice that it, 
I mean, my sister, my mom, they all knew he was about his past. You know what I'm saying? It's it's yeah. kind of interesting. And what's interesting too is that um, he already filled his he's filmed his cameo for Avengers Four. And so, I mean, I think it's going to a lot of people going to get the feels when that comes on the screen during Avengers four. You oh, know what I mean? Sure. For sure. And what's interesting is he's filmed apparently a handful of others. Uh, Kevin Feige alluded to that. They they put a lot of they film a lot of this in advance. So the, he may pop up in some other places. But uh, before we get any further, I want to see uh, I'm going to get to my Twitter and I'm going to see if I can share this video um, that Stanley did. Um, and it was, I mean, I mean, when do you think it was done, Otto? I mean, it was pretty- I was done Saturday. So I'm going to, this is a true story. Um, so I have a friend, his name is John Tamino. He's a good friend of Mitch Halleck's. John Tamino is Roy Thomas's agent. On Saturday, Roy Thomas and John Tamino were in California and they facilitated a visit with Stan Lee. So Roy Thomas and John Tamino went and hung out with Stan Lee at his house on Saturday and spent a half hour on it. And, um, the Roy Thomas appreciation page has the full write-up on it, and uh, it's pretty interesting. And the video that you're going to show, and the video and the picture that they took together, he's wearing the same apparel. Of course, he kind of always wore the same, you know, shirt and pants and khakis and stuff like that. But this has got to be within 12 to 18 hours before he passed away in real time. You know, so very touching at the time. Yeah. So I mean, this. I mean, it just goes to show you that. I mean. You know, whatever you things you have about paying for this, that, and the other, and facilitators and people who are all dragging, you know what it ultimately was? He wanted to make people happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? To his detriment, I think, to his schedule that he was traveling and he wasn't feeling well, but he did it because he wanted to make the fans happy. I mean, you know, oh, most of the sure. money he wasn't getting, you know, he made a pretty good living off of his residuals that he was yeah, still he getting was definitely up. Definitely not in it for the money. The people yeah. around him may have been in it for the money, but he was. Definitely not in it for the money because he never he never monetized it even close to the way. I mean, look at uh, you know J.K. Rawlings, uh, Harry Potter world again. What, what's her net worth? A billion dollars? Yeah. Know, what was Stan's net worth? Twenty million? Thirty million? I mean, it wasn't. It was big. Don't get me wrong. It was it was it was a it was a, it was a healthy thing. But he would he could have held out, got hundreds of millions had he played his cards right. Kirby died. I don't think with much money. Um, Dicko, I don't I don't think maybe you know five. Five million, ten million, somewhere around there. Yeah. Not money to that where people that created something like that deserve. Right. Yeah, and I think Ditko is still doing some other things. I mean, he had his office in Manhattan, right? He was a recluse, like really, yeah. like deep. I mean, he was still answering. He had an office and he was answering fan letters, which is you know right. kind of interesting in itself. But yeah. all right, guys, let's hopefully uh, I don't screw this up here. Uh, but let me share my screen here, and hopefully it doesn't go all weird. Uh, share screen. Uh, there it goes. Uh, share my entire screen. Share. Oops, it's doing that again. Okay. We're going down the vault. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here. Let me put the screen on me. Why uh, oh, I hate it when this happens. Oh, there you go. There it is. Is it working now? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. All right, here we go. You guys, uh, go ahead and mute yourselves. I'm gonna play this for you guys. Yeah. Stanley always loved those mirrored walls. I feel like every picture I see him in in this house, he always had mirrored walls. Yeah, that's for sure. Look at that. I can't hear any of the volume. Of yeah, it. I don't Tim, know it's not going to volume. Jeff Bridges is not dead. What up, Jim? Jeff Bridges is not dead, Dark Side Jetty. You are right. And all the all the legends, Jeff the Geek, they did kind of dress the same. But I think that that's probably a thing with uh, really smart people. They're kind of quirky in their own way. Yeah. You drive by Yale, one of the you know smartest schools in the country, and I mean those guys could barely cross the road, but they're geniuses in their own right. I don't think Tim can hear us. Man, it stands looking old in that picture. Yeah, Boy, that's, I mean, that's, like that's, I said, that's got to be within 18 hours before he passed. That is crazy to think. You know, life is so short like that. Just talking one minute, right. boom. 
gone. I mean, he was just there hanging out. All right. Did I stop sharing that? No. Right. Well, you didn't get any volume on any of it. If that I means. think the people can hear it through uh, YouTube, though, I think. Okay. I don't think we can hear it through the Google Hangout. But if not, just uh, right. it's on Stan Lee's official Twitter. Uh, yeah. It was posted today. I also uh, retweeted it. Um, and, you know, I mean, he's saying he looks old, but, geez, he was 95. And do you know how many 95-year-olds so... came and strung together a sentence? You know what I mean? <laughs> I, kill, I kill to be nice. You kidding I'm me? You. I'm telling you. There's 50-year-olds that can't talk that well. Right, exactly. It's There's 35-year-olds that can't. Yeah. There's some Gemini's so... that can't even talk like that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Shout out to Tim. <laughs> what, uh, there's something that, you know, I did want to talk about this, though, because when we talk about who Stan Lee reached, if you looked on social media, I mean, you had everybody from yeah, The Rock yeah to um, superstars, everybody saying, thank you, Stan Lee, sharing pictures, sharing yeah. amazing things. I mean, he was on the cover of the New York Post, the New York Times. I mean, because his com passing. Comics don't matter. I, you know, this comics don't matter. You could be black, white, Puerto right. Rican, Asian. You could be rich, poor, live in filth, live in a mansion. It doesn't yeah. matter. When you read that book, you read the book with the same two eyes that I do. Right, exactly, exactly. So he is he really just crossed barriers and crossed, you know, Pat. I mean, just it was unbelievable. It's just I mean, he created my three favorite characters: Silver okay. Surfer, Doctor Strange, and Thor. You know what I mean? I mean, right. that's those are my those are my people right there. You know what I mean? And, you know, Stan Lee with the help of Jack Kirby, you know, I mean, you know, arguably created one of the most iconic uh, characters in history with Spider-Man along with Steve Ditko. You know, I mean, you know, but when I'm reading some of the, the testimonies and, and tributes from comic creators who, who worked alongside with them, they said not only he may not have been the best writer, but he was a great editor in chief. Right. Because. Right. There's a great, great detailed article on how he said, you know, I want these characters to kind of, I want them to be real. And he said, I want them to feel like you feel. Not everybody is perfect, right? Superman is bulletproof. Right. He can't die. He wanted to create characters with flaw and he wanted to put them in a real world. You know, in the world of DC, you had Gotham and Metropolis. He goes, no, I want to pick these characters. I want to put them in New York City in situations that you recognize. I'm going to give you a character who's got a job, he's got to pay the rent, he's got issues finding girlfriends in Peter Parker. Unless you're Luke Cage. Luke Cage don't pay the rent, tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then he created, you know, a, a family, a first family, a Fantastic Four, and he says, you know, I want to do something different. You know, this was in, in you know, in 1962, right? They wanted to create something like DC was doing with all the superheroes in Justice League. When, you know, the Avengers obviously would be a Justice League comparison, but then, you know, you can obviously, arguably say Fantastic Four, is the most original for its time because it was a family and you know ben grimm was also <laughs> part of the tammy but it was a right. team and you know and ben grimm was the classic i'm a monster but i have the emotions and feelings of more than humans do but i on the outer side i look monstrous and then right. peter parker of course you know that was the, i think the character i could relate most with as a kid because he was young you know and he you know he's just doing his thing and that's why like i said like the first comic I read was Spider-Man and then I started dabbling in X-Men and then like 82 or 81 when Spider-Man and his amazing friends came out, man, I was hooked. I was hooked. I was like Firestar, yeah. Iceman, you know, and the damn dog and everything. But I mean, his voice and his Lola. introduction, <laughs> I mean, that was, that was it. And then I think he did it for the, remember the Hulk cartoon as well? Yeah, I think so too. They did voice a few cartoons. Yeah. Yeah. So actually he has a cameo. His first cameo ever is in the, uh, Peter Parker, uh, Spider-Man and his amazing friends, where he, sh oh, he's I, at, he shows up I, as a cartoon. Okay. I, I've heard from a reliable source that dabbles a lot in artwork that a lot when they moved out of the their studios in New York, they left all that behind. The janitor grabbed the stuff and basically threw it away, but he didn't throw it away. He kept it. And to this day, if you buy an original piece of artwork, there is a slim chance, if you're within this realm, that it yeah. could ever get recalled as stolen property. Really? That's, you know, that I've heard this, I've heard something to this extent where that original artwork, people didn't care about, you know what I mean? Nobody cared. Care. It was worth they nothing. Would, they would use it as floor mats. If it was snowing and raining out up here, they would throw it down as floor mats to just so that their, their, um, their boots wouldn't get muddy in the office. So oh my God. These, these uh, posters here, both of these, right? So they had a, a factory in Yuma, Arizona, and, and they, they had a printing press that printed doubles and it sent out German variants, Mexican variants, so on and so forth. And uh, they went out of business in the 90s, and they had a wall, a, and each wall was about this. It was about the size of a comic book panel, and it's a box, like a, I don't know, four feet tall by three foot box, and they're like three feet deep. And they built a wall to separate the offices from the printing presses. Yep. And that went out of business. The guy just tore the wall down, 
and they called in the contractor. The contractor thought it might have some value. He threw it in one of his sheds. Little did we know, years later, he came out, he, was, he scouted on the CGC boards and started flipping actual pieces from the Yuma, Arizona factory. So I bought two. I bought my two favorite pieces. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing to me that, you know, that's why I think, you know, high grade uh, golden age and silver age are so valuable because, you know, kids didn't give a shit back then. They read the comic, folded no. half, put it in their back pocket. You know what no, I mean? Like, I mean, you beat know. their little brother with it. Right? <laughs> Nowadays, a kid buys a comic. If there's a little dent in it, he's putting it back. You know, he's going yeah. through the he's going through the shelf and he's doing everything. There's diamond, there's diamond distributors to make sure if they, if they don't like it, they send it back. I mean, it's kind of amazing when you think about. Stanley, what's it? First Comic Con was what, 1975? Yeah. Right around there, right? I mean, if you think to where we are now and how Stanley helped push that along with other cats, then you think of the generations that came after him and they perhaps learned from their mistakes, right? Um, and some repeated their mistakes, uh, Image Comics looking at you, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, but the stories were there. And then, you know, but it's so hard for me to, to fathom how I, he, how iconic he was creating these characters. And you think anybody can write a comic, but then you think, nah, it's not so no, hard, no, man. No, you know, no, you know. no, that's real hard. I mean, you see people try it. You go to all these Comic Cons, you see right? it. My uh, brother, I mean, your brother. Comic. Yeah, right. I mean, my you know, brother, Power Kid Comics, he writes and draws his own comic books, and it takes him time. I mean, he does it the old school way. He's a yep. um, Joe Kuber School of Cartooning graduate, and he draws it by hand. He, he did you say Kuber? I did say Kuber. How do we uh, say it now? Is it <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is Stephen Colbert, man. This yeah, is I Kubert, know, I know. the Kubert School, man. Kubert, Kubert, yeah. Kubert, Kubert. I get you know, tomato, tomato. So, but he does it. It's 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 daunting. So you know his what he did. Easy. Was, it's not easy. It's not easy. And it's and not easy to make something that's that appeals why to everybody. Went bankrupt. But that's right. why they went bankrupt. Because it's to, to give the people what they want and actually figure out how to monetize it is always a, a huge struggle. And, you know, he built Stan Lee and, and Dicko and Kirby. They built a multi-trillion, trillion dollar franchise. And they were not billionaires or even hundred millionaires. So they right. didn't do it for the money. They did it for the love. And I think that that was why it crosses over so many things from athletes to movie stars to whatever you are in the world. You could be the baddest, toughest guy in the world. You could be the biggest geek in the world. Y'all relate it to the same thing because right. of that world that he built. And also a lot of credit should go to Kirby, Lee, Ditko, and, and all the guys from Marvel who kind of invented the Marvel bullpen way Yes. of doing things right of of mass yeah. storytelling and, and building a cohesive world because if you read a lot of golden age stuff i mean you, know, you got superman you got batman you got wonder woman rarely did they ever meet each other in their worlds right until later on right when stanley was like you know what all these guys live in new york city they, they gotta, gotta go. run into each other <laughs> right, right? right. I mean, yeah. shit, it's not that big of a city you know? <laughs> i mean I, I mean now you think about you know kevin feige is this generation's a cinematic Stan Lee, where he may not have created the characters, but he's creating the tapestry and the storylines of a cohesive world. And we're thinking, man, you know, it's hard in comic books. Can you imagine doing that with movies and the productions and all these people that you have? And Kevin Feige also had a nice thing to say about Stan Lee. I mean, Jeff Johns, that's something to say, Jim Lee. I mean, all these cats just coming out and saying, you know, giving their props to, to Stan Lee. And it's like, you know, you have to appreciate them while they're here. Because when they're gone, you really kind of appreciate them, you know, and it's kind of it's kind of backwards thinking, right? We always appreciate something when it's not there, right? right. So, I mean, well, it's, go ahead. I think that I think that you know when you talk about Kevin Foggy and you could bring Todd McFarlane in there and you could bring in anybody else after Ditko, Kirby, and Stan Lee to me, and all I'm going to say is what they did is they took the gold that those guys those guys made and they molded it into different pieces, different chains, different jewelry. But those guys created the liquid gold. And I don't know many people like, you know, I'm sure Lucas invented the gold of Star Wars. And other people, I'm sure, came in and helped him twist it and bend it and manipulate it to get it the way that it is now. But I don't know if anybody can ever come close to that. I mean, Foggy is, I think that Kevin Foggy does a great job, but I bet you there's 60 guys behind him that could have done a good job too. We'll never know, but Stan Lee and these guys, I mean, they came up from scratch. There was nothing. It was just, I mean, right. bright ideas like that, they don't even come along anymore. Right. So you always hear the story about when Stan was working for another company and he asked his wife, you know, what should I do? You know, should I do this? And she's like, well, you don't like what you're doing now, so what do you got to lose, right? You've always heard that about, you know, how he, you know, then he went into the Marvel comics and stuff like that. So, you know, it was the leap of faith that he took and, 
he was such a visionary and you know such a trendsetter and that's what we have you know yeah, you know and i think i think that she was yeah. a major part of his life that a lot of people don't you know take into account for because uh, arguably uh, he i think he kind of lo he lost a lot of his zeal and zest for life when his i mean his wife was with him what 69 70 <laughs> years right i mean that's a huge chunk of your life that's missing and then you know and then all the i mean all the horrible stuff if you're new to the comic book collecting community or you're the social media generation where you see all these stories coming about of this, that, and the other. I mean, all this started after his wife passed away. Right. Prior to that, he was just going about his thing, doing his thing. I mean, you know, when I saw him at the signings, like I said, I, I stood in line for three hours. I would not stand in line for anybody else's signature for three fucking hours. You know, I don't care if it's Jesus Christ has come down. I had to sign my Bible or whatever. I, don't I, know, if I can meet Jesus Christ. I may wait the three hours <laughs> just to prove uh, that it's real at this point. I'm yeah, afraid real. what he might tell me if, it's, if he is real. He goes, you know, fuck it up, boy. <laughs> well, he'll know whether you're waiting the three hours or not, I guess. Yeah, yeah, there's really. a great cartoon. Uh, somebody drew in picture of uh, Stan Lee, and Stan Lee is coming up to heaven, and uh, God tells him, hey, you did a good job yourself of creating universes, kid. That was pretty nice, well, you was know. Pretty good. Yeah, there was, was a lot of them that caught you in the fields this, this uh, weekend. No, yeah. you know, and you know, a lot of times, you know, people get to celebrity worship or whatever, but I mean, you know, a lot of, you know, this isn't like, to me, it, it was like, uh, the only other time a celebrity death really impacted me was when uh, Adam Yock died, uh, of the beastie boys, beastie boys. Okay. Cause I grew up on the beasties, right. Yeah, exactly. High school. I mean, and then after a while, when they grew up and they became adults, like I did, they were, uh, philanthropists. They were giving back. Remember Free Tibet and all this. That, these guys grew up and I grew up along with them. And then Stan right. Lee, he was always there when I was in my dark places. When I say he was there, it was the comic books that he helped create, right? When I was in the hospital for a week, when I was a kid at home or <coughs> having problems with family, whatever, I would always go to my room. If I was getting grounded, or if I was in trouble, or if you know I was getting you know yelled at by my folks, oh, I had I my really I had my comics, man. I had right. I always had my comics. I would reread the same comics over and over again. Nowadays, yeah. damn kids got the internet. You can go on YouTube and watch whatever. But back in the day, we had four, four fucking TV channels and one TV in the house, right? And yeah. so I would go back. I learned how to draw through comic books. I mean everything. I mean that's why it's such a. I mean a lot of think a lot of the comic creators of this generation that are our age kind of grew up the same way we did, right? I mean, we chose the comic book medium because it was different from others. Where now, it, the comic book medium is just... Nah, now, it's, now it's bullshit. It's now all it's over bullshit. the place. It's, it's all, all over the place. It's number one bullshit. Yeah, it's a, it, back then, it wasn't a business. It was like, man, I'm going to read this comic, I'm going to devour it, and then I got to wait a whole month for the next one to come out. If the it was page. the 90s and an image comic, you had to wait another six months for the next right. issue to come so, out. You know what so I'm we get to True Dan and figure out, well, I don't know where this eyeliner thing comes from. I don't have any eyeliner. I don't know. Are you getting killed on he's that? Got, he's got beautiful lashes. What are you going to do? Got hey, listen, if some people say it's makeup. Maybe he was born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. I don't know. Well, the person that said that should be asking themselves, why are they staring so deeply into your eyes? Yeah. So, I mean, that's... Uh, uh, that, listen, Tom's my number one Canadian. I, I said that Kevin saw that. I caught that. I knew that was happening. I, know, I caught that quote. Oh, yeah. Oh, Tom's yeah, because, my number one Canuck. Well, I mean, Ken's definitely the second because he couldn't make it today. But yeah, for those who tuned in, you know, sorry, Ken couldn't make it. But let me say what's up to everybody in the live chat. Tom Rudan. Well, you know, Tom is my my Canadian brother. You know what I'm saying? I, I, excuse me, my cousin, because Jay and Guy Wen is my other cousin. Right. But just said a everybody, lot of cousins out there. A lot of yeah. cousins, Canadian cousins. Uh, what's up to everybody in the live chat, man? We say what's up. Stay Puff, Jeff the Geek, Randy Sloan, Comic Gam, uh, Kachong, Nemesis Prime from the yeah. Grotto, Comics yeah. Talk 101, Johnny Boy, uh, Dark Side Jedi holding it down, arguing with people. AG Surfer, Strictly Comics, Stay Puff 1983. Very Gary, thanks for coming on the show last week, bro. We would have had you on this week, but I thought that uh, uh, Ken Lashley was going to be on. But if you haven't, go check out Ken Lashley's Facebook page. A Canadian uh, uh, news channel actually interviewed him uh, about Stan Lee. So he had yeah, some really very cool. nice things to say. And hopefully I was going to get him on the show because we're going to talk about some stuff he's working on. And he's going to give us a, a, an update on the Milestone comics uh, that he's doing. Um, and if you haven't, the I think it was the last episode or uh, of Supernatural used his art. He did original art for that show, the Supernatural. No, I like the biggest. So uh, yeah, so on Supernatural, there's an episode where they go into like a geek store and there's a lot of like comic art that's done on the wall. He did that specifically for Supernatural <laughs> show. That's my that's guilty cool. little pleasure, man. I I, I I love that show Supernatural. I hope Let's it goes see. on. King of the forever, man. Man. I don't know what to do. I gotta I gotta patent these eyelashes. People are all over them. They want them. They like them. <laughs> 
the dimple. I don't know. I got a fake dimple. Maybe I stuck an ice pick through it. I got some eyelashes. I don't I love you too. Dennis has got the funds. You know, he's got a whole makeup crew with him <laughs> right before he gets on air. You know what I'm saying? That's why I was late. He's got, right. he's got no, the Dennis, whole... Come on, it was the kids. It was the kids doing it for you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. He steps well, away. Really they, they dab yeah. him up real fast to make sure he's not sweating on camera and shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. He's, he's like... Uh, cold he's like, what, what's his name? Uh, the guy. Fuck it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. You know, and you got the collar on and shit like that. So. <laughs> That's it. I had to come right. And I felt yeah. bad. I didn't come last time. We had car trouble. Uh, I'm out there getting enterprise rental cars at 9 o'clock at night. Jesus, and by the time Christmas. I got back, like, whatever, man. Let this okay. go. I'm moving on. So yeah. I have a question for you guys because this is, you know, one of the we kind of touched on it in the beginning. This was a question of all the cameos, which one was your favorite? You know, I mean, I think there was like thirty of them, thirty-five of them. And I got a different goes, answer for everybody. All right, this goes back a long ways, you know. So my favorite, be- my favorite cameo is hands down from Mallrats. Okay, right. That's, That's yeah. A good one. That's a really because yeah. you know he really got in depth conversation. You know, because if you remember Mallrats. But the the entire movie is just some ridiculous conversations. Like, remember the whole conversation about uh, Lois Lane can't hold Superman's sperm; it would yeah, explode her. Right. You know yeah, I mean? And so there's a. Scene. I don't like to see Stan in that light, though. Like, I yeah. I don't want to ever see Stan having sex. It's like your parents; you don't want to think exactly. like right. that. Well, no, he, he talks he, about boobies. It's kind of creepy. I don't want to yeah. be in on that. He comes and talks to the character Jason Lee. Remember, he's standing so in front of a lingerie. Store. He's standing in front of a lingerie store. And uh, his friend tells him to talk because he's having problems at home with his girlfriend. So Stan Lee tells him a story about, I remember when I wrote a story about, you know, Peter Parker and uh, and Gwen Stacy. And they, they were going to do this. And then he looks at him and goes, holy shit, you're Stan fucking Lee, yeah. right? And so, you know, that was like, to me, Mallrats was like one of the first comic book movies ever, right? I mean, that was Kevin yeah, Smith much. early. You know what I mean? That was yeah, a, was, yeah. a <laughs> movie about comic books, but not a superhero movie. You know what I mean? Correct. What about you, Dennis? Oh, my favorite was uh, Thor when when he's uh, when he's first when he's trying to pull the hammer and he's in the truck and yeah, you don't know okay. that it's him obviously and all of a sudden he goes ripping and the, the back of the truck gets ripped off. And yeah, you, right. Just, I love it because he's like he's such an old senile man in that part and at the point he's probably like 90, 89. So he's that's what he really is. So yeah. I thought that portrayed him in a great light. And then my second non movie was uh, the Spider-Man ride in Universal when the dump truck's about, when you're about to hit the dump truck and you see Stan Lee like shaking because yes, like, you yeah. the stairway, you're about to hit me. What do you get your hands up for? Right. Um, That's it. Those are my two for sure. about you, Otto? So one, um, well, there's, let me say, there was three. The one I thought was the funniest was when he was in Deadpool and they were in a strip joint. Oh, and yeah. And he's the DJ, right? Like, yeah, come on. like that's Coming on a too. stage, Coming Jasmine. Coming on stage next, right? <laughs> The one that hit me the most was um, in Age of Apocalypse when he's actually when the nukes are launched and he's actually sitting standing there with his wife, you know, because that was important because there's the two of them as a couple on the big screen, which was very iconic, and probably my, and yeah, and probably my favorite. And Dennis, <laughs> the book that I'm showing, I got from my good buddy Dennis over here, is when he's sitting up in Guardians and he's with the Watchers. And yes. this is something that we can debate, and maybe we'll never find out if if no. this whole time was Stanley a watcher. You know what I mean? Yes, like, he was. Fuck it. Right. We're gonna end that debate right now. Yeah, Stanley right now, has right been now, in every top. movie. He yep. ties it all together. He ties he, it all together. He's been everything. So Stanley has been the watcher over the multiverses, and that uh, those are some of my three favorite ones. You know what I mean? So yeah. And yeah, I, I like, that, I like that Stan Lee is watching, uh, watching over all the characters. Uh, you know what? I believe it was Chris Hemsworth who said for the memorial service that all the MCU characters should come in costume. Right. Hey. That would be interesting. You know what I mean? I mean, in a obviously, in a classic <coughs> way, you know, you don't want to just Deadpool I mean, showing up with dick jokes at a funeral, you know, for the man. Right. But yeah. I mean, that'd be cool. It, okay, the ultimate tribute would have. His MCU characters as his pallbearers, right? Right. Yeah, Thor, Captain America, Hulk, Spider Man, all mm-hmm. carrying his cast. Mm-hmm. Good lord, talk about the feels that you would get that Dumb. shit, man. Yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, is is he going to be buried? I mean, is that what he chose to do? Did he choose burial or cremation? I don't, well, they haven't said know? anything yet. Yeah, I don't even know if they even said his his actual cause of death, which is probably natural causes. The only thing I know is he had pneumonia at the time. Um, yeah. I if think I'm that he- big. I'm definitely not getting married in a graveyard. Dude, people are going to be all over my shit. Yeah. Right. Like, I'm not, uh, you can't, my family can't go there to mourn. It's going to be a bunch of people, you know, right. or maybe, or maybe the flip side of that coin is maybe you want that. Maybe you want Bro, all your fans I, to have a place to worship. I go to, um, 
my my girlfriend has this morbid curiosity with uh, cemeteries, and so she likes going there and taking pictures of like uh, celebrity tombs. And so there's certain one in, in L.A. You go to Hollywood Forever Cemetery, and there's another one, and all the celebrities there. There's some you can't get to. You can't get to Michael Jackson's or Marilyn Monroe's. It's inside of a locked, uh, uh, whatever they call it. Yeah, mausoleum. mausoleum. But there's yeah. other ones like uh, Jim Morrison. Right. Uh, the Doors. His uh, people are always there. You always see flowers there. Yeah, so I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe you want that. Maybe, but maybe you're Michael Jackson, and you'd rather be locked away. I, I think he's gonna he's gonna be buried next to his wife, definitely yeah, wherever definitely she is. So, I mean, when he when it does happen, when all the commotion comes out, I would definitely come out to visit his gravesite. Our friend JLS Comics actually posted a picture. I I need to find his Hollywood Star of Fame to uh, you know because there's a giant tribute of people leaving. That's a thing in you know in LA. Whenever somebody passes away, they they'll put uh, flowers on their Walk of Star or Star of Fame. Or if you're Donald Trump, they'll actually just rare tear the shit out. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> Guys are out there with bulldozers like picking at, it, and then they, they they decide you know we can't always keep on coming back. Let's just remove it for all intents and purposes. But he got his Star of Fame relatively late in life too, because yeah, I remember I was watching a CNN. Uh, they talked about he never ever thought he would ever get a Hollywood <coughs> Walk of Fame, uh, a star in the Walk of Fame. You know that was always he thought that was. He thought that was part of Hollywood, and he wasn't part of that thing. But now you can't. He's definitely part of it now. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's, right. it's it's a billion. I mean, Marvel just Marvel movies themselves, billions and billions of dollars, and we're talking just you know, box office, trillion. right? Probably close to trillions at this point yeah. if you were to, to bundle them all up. Oh yeah, you think about the marketing and everything about it. I mean, yeah, you know, billions, toys, everything that goes along with them. I mean, it's he's created as just far as job creation. I mean, he's created hundreds of thousands of jobs. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. You know, think about all the people that were employed, whether it be Marvel, whether it be signature handling, whether it be his work with CGC. I mean, I think that the pressers are going to take a huge hit in this whole thing because a lot of people would say, hey, I'm going to get this book. I'm going to go get it pressed, get it signed by Stan Lee. I mean, that was the, the most common sentiment at all the Comic-Cons that you were at or when anybody was waiting in lines. It was always the thing. Yeah. Now, I mean, you know, what do you do? I mean – yeah, there's still there's still great guys out there that you can get signatures by, but not. I mean, he was one of the kings, and right, Dicko was, never did it, so you didn't have to worry about him. And Kirby right. was dead before it became big. Well, I yeah. think what Otto was saying all there's still cats like Joe Sonat, uh, yes. Roy, yeah, Thomas, sure. uh, Roy Thomas. I think yeah. was uh, the cats in New York like uh, Ramita Junior or was it yeah. was Ramita Junior, right? And they work yeah. with those uh, Dennis. Do you know him, uh, NY Comics guys that do New the York. facility? You know them, I right? Have worked with I yeah. have worked with them. Um, and, and the first time I ever met Stan Lee was actually with them. Um, they, he was supposed to come to lunch with us. And it's not a, it's not a very good story for the show, but he was uh, supposed to come to lunch with us. And his handlers wouldn't let him at that time. And uh, he said he wanted to get a steak. So they went out, got him a steak, brought it back, cut it up, and fed him like a like a baby. Um, but that was my first time ever meeting him. And, I, and, and all I could think of, it was like, Finally, looking at the Wizard of Oz and seeing behind the curtain, I was like, "Ah, like uh, I don't right. want to see this again." And you can't unsee. You can't put the toothpaste back in the jar. Yeah. So you know, it was what it was. And then I, I reached out to New York Comics to to get me a Romita signature. I was like a day late, and I had spent a, a good amount of money with them, and uh, they kind of blew me off. And I said, "You know what? Fuck them guys." Okay. So but there we go. So here's when I stood in line for uh, three and a half hours at Kamikaze. And I remember I was getting closer and closer. I was like, uh, for the first time, I was like, fuck, what am I going to say to him? I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. I, right. You know, I want to thank him. You know, back then he was already getting old, so you couldn't touch him. Uh, and these were his, this was the Stanley collectibles days with Mac Anderson's and the rest of the douchebags. Right? Oh, but the um, best. Yeah, they're fucking assholes. So, you know, me and my boy were like, man, what are you going to say to him? Oh, man, I'm going to thank him. And then I just got the high stand. <laughs> I was yeah, all nervous. You know, like I said, I've I met like you know a dozen celebrities. So in, in LA, you just run into them. They're just out and about, you know. It's not so much in Orange County now, but in LA, shit, you know. And you can tell some want to be noticed and some don't. Um, our friend uh, Nash from Instagram, he has a great story where he uh, saw him at Kamikaze, and and Nash had like back, he had like super VIP. Yeah, passes, Nash right? was like it was in a parking lot, right, Tim? Yeah, he was like in a parking lot, and Stanley was just walking by. And he's like, "Hey, how you doing?" And Stanley <coughs> yeah, just no, yucked him picture. up, and he got a picture of him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that was unbelievable. Yeah, that's definitely a cool, and that's the interaction that I wanted. I didn't want the whole, you know, push through the line, see the world's tallest horse, see the world's right, tallest right. horse. And it, that's what it, you know, felt like ultimately. But and I think that at that time, you know, his wife had already passed, and I think once she passed, he was like, "Fuck it, I'm going to do what I got to do at this point and finish out my years." But 
you know, I, I think he was in interviews even, he seemed a lot more livelier before her passing. Yeah, yeah and definitely. I think also, if you think about it, he his travel schedule, you know, he didn't want to be alone. That's why he surrounded himself with people. Because you think about it, you've been with the same person for 70 years, man. That's like losing your leg. You know what I mean? Yeah, you I don't mean, know how to be alone. How do, what are exactly. you doing? Exactly. So, no, I mean, no, not at all. And so unfortunately he had these other things going on, but you know, I'm glad that a lot of creators like uh, Todd McFarlane, Rob Liefeld and all these guys at least visited him before he passed away. And I think, you know, you can see when those weird videos came out that he was genuinely happy to be around these yeah. young cats who posted that. I think uh, King of the Golden State posted this video. It's on YouTube where it's called Stanley uh, owns McFarlane and Liefeld. It's, it, it's oh, that, yeah. remember that series yes. where he would interview these young and he was just like, Suddenly, just making like backhanded comments and just jabbing witty. the shit out of a right? He was yeah, super yeah. witty. Stanley yeah. was one of the wittiest guys, and even uh, witty with the ladies. Like even at, oh, he, uh, he was had to be know, like eighty eight years old. I mean, he yeah. had the quick jabs and the pickup lines to all the right. girls and everything else. He um, had the gift of gab, man. He he knew how to charm. He could charm the pants off of any you know me. Yeah. I don't give. A, he'll charm the pants right. off me. I don't give a fuck. I'll yeah. say it. God damn it. Oh no, listen. <laughs> let me, they'll talk to me all day, Stan. So. I waited at Rhode Island Comic Con three years ago. I waited in line, um, and I have this book right up here, which is one of my prized possessions. It's Captain America 111. I met Steranko, Joe Sinnott, Joe Sinnott, and then I met Stan. So I waited in line for almost four hours for Stan for the last signature. Now, you know, you go through the whole line, like Dennis said, and I said, man, he, he you know, he's only looking at things that are, you know, young kids and pretty girls, right? He's not going to look at those weird yeah. ball guy. You know what I mean? So just like you, Tim. I said, what, Don't what sell I, yourself short, Otto. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I said, what am I going to do to, have a know, fetish. Yeah, to get this guy's attention? So as he's signing the book, I said, Stan, thank you very much because you, I know how to read. And he picks his head up and I grab his arm and I say, and my name's Everett Hillman. Thank you very much. <laughs> like, his hand lifts him right over to me. And all I did was want to shake his hand, look him in the eyes and say, thank you. And I left. And that was it, you know? So I thought you went home and put lipstick on the wall and went to bed. Cross this guy. Oh, did you just do a? I think you just made a Billy Madison reference, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm glad now that when the t the last time I did see him, that I I was able to say thank you in person. You know, right. I think and now I can I, I can appreciate that moment. I, I actually took. You know how you can't take pictures of him. So as he's entering the uh, little museum tent area, I took a picture because I was standing right. I was, I was like, tick, 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 and you know, and he was walking by. And I don't know if you guys got this, but I I was part. I did the signings when he was still doing the whole Stanley collectibles thing where they had the giant kind of museum. You go, you stood in line and walk through and you saw all of the uh, signed things. And there's even some stuff that he, where he actually did the art on very rare, like CGC things. And I don't even talk about where all those things ended up, but we'll get to, we'll get to that and we'll expose those frauds when that's, it does happen. Cause I have a very bad feeling. Some stuff is going to happen. Hopefully though, his will took care of that, but you know, the whole thing with Stanley Collectibles, I, I think they still own a lot of that that museum that you walk through when you stand right. in line to get a signature. They Stanley Collectibles, I think, owns that, and I think uh, his daughter is going to go after him in court and try to get that stuff back, as she should. I meant, you know, absolutely, hundred percent. What up, Atlas Wolf? Yeah, uh, that's a uh, 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 Lords of the Long Box slash Gemini back and forth. What's up, everybody? Jay Rambo, Jeff the Geek, Atlas Wolf. Uh, yeah, we're not really doing any topics today. We just want to share our thoughts and, you know, celebrate the man's life. You know, I mean, this is, uh, we've lost, you know, here's the, uh, here's a really coincidental thing, ironic thing, whatever you, however, we lost both Spider-Man's parents in the same year. Yeah, uh, right. So we lost both Steve, uh, uh, uh Ditko and Stanley in 2017. That's those are giants in the comic book industry, man. Oh, I mean, Dicko didn't get the credit, and it was nice to see that Stanley did. But it was also very sad if you're a true, you know, comic book person to, to think about how Kirby and Dicko went out because they didn't go out like this. Um, and it's not Stan's fault at all. It's, he didn't. It's not like he's Steve. Uh, not like he's uh, Bill Gates, and, and he stole the the rights to Windows from another friend and and put it out. He didn't do that. He worked with them, and he wanted them to get the light. And I don't know why it never you know materialized monetization wise. But you know, um, I don't. I, I don't think it was. You know, it, listen. Let's face it. It's hip to be a geek right now, right? Like you got. We now it is. Now, yes. right, right, right. 10, 20, 20 years ago, twenty five years ago, when I was going to these cons, you know, my buddies would be like, "What are you going there for? Do you go to some old like?" BFW hall and you know you're looking through books and stuff like that and like <laughs> and that was like not even like you know it was what me and my me and my brother brett did 
but it wasn't what other people did, and it wasn't really hip to be a geek. But now it's in such the mainstream. It's yeah, chic to be geek, man. Yeah, it's it's really, chic. Chic. Dude, they wear so, they wear fake glasses. You see these guys yeah. and girls walk around. They got glasses like they need glasses. The glasses they don't do nothing. They're just there's like sunglasses. Right, right. Oh, Bro, I, I I legit used to like uh, right you know like coming in like junior high and high school, like, you know, I legit used to go buy comics on the download because I lived in the hood and all my friends were gangsters and we were all in that thing. And you got to think of Cali in the eighties and nineties, it was gang. We were gangsters all over the place, but you know, every Wednesday, shit, I ducked out and I went and got my comics. Then like a right, right. couple of the homies were like, Hey, what do you got there? And I was like, Oh yeah, let's go. And then, you know, next thing you know, got some, the homies know what comics were. And it was like, you know, after a while you can still go, but you know, it, there was people who were, uh, I think adopted comics were counterculture people. When yes. I say counterculture people, I think if you think of every rapper, they were into comics. I mean, look at all the damn Wu Tang's covers, right? All comic book based. They were all heavily influenced. So you think of all the rappers, all the writers and stuff, even guys like J.R.R. Martin. Wrote a letter to fucking Stan Lee for in the fan. I forgot which issue it was right. Fantastic. I think it was a Fantastic Four issue, right? I mean, yeah. so all the people that were counterculture who were different from the mainstream, they were into comics because comics was the thing, right? And if if it was creative thinkers, all those people exactly that you said yeah. were, are all yeah. very creative thinkers. And I think if you're a creative thinker, you lose yourself in artwork and books because it gives you a way. Like when I read the Harry Potter book, or if I read another book. I see Harry Potter and I see these people and the way that I see them and I see Harry, uh, you know, Spider-Man and Hulk the way that I want to see him. And though, yes, you, you show me how the guideline of how he's going to be is that doesn't mean that's not how I, you know, if I close my eyes, how I see the real Hulk looking or the real Spider-Man looking and it gives you that creativity and everybody. Yeah. I think that. nowadays people who have read comic books, they actually have a visual uh, source of it from the movies. Right. But yeah. I'm going to tell you for decades, I was better mispronouncing. Without it. I was mispronouncing adaptanium for the longest oh time, bro. <laughs> Until right. I actually heard it in a movie, I go, God damn, yeah, that's God, how you pronounce that? that wrong. Oh my God. <laughs> There's like a ton of things where you finally hear it on screen. You're like, oh shit. So yeah. I've been saying it wrong all this time, man. Or especially like a uh, creator's name, like Bill Sinkevich. You know, right, for exactly. years I was being Sinkovich, you know, yep. but it's no, Sinkevich. Or uh, I, I even think, uh, like, is it Joe Sinat <laughs> or Joe Sinat? Or, you know, I, I don't even know how you pronounce it. I don't it. know. Right. Well, I've always said uh, I've always said Joe, Joe Sinnott or Sinat and Sinnott. Well, you also say Kubert. Kubert too. Who knows? I mean, these <laughs> Kubert, tomato, tomato. You know. So, but those are the guys that I feel really bad for. Like I honestly like Joe Sinnott must be like oh, my God. It's been my one of my best friends. You know. I think Joe's might be a year or two older or younger. You know, Steranko, he's up there now. So, the, you know, Roy Thomas, the Golden Boy, he's getting up there now. So these people are. It, well, I think you go tough. through phases yeah. in life, right? Like, you know, you, right. you, you yeah. grow up and you go to college and then you're right. at the college phase and people start getting married then people start having right. kids. And, and you, you know, they're work. at the phase where, you know, 90% of the people that they play pinochle with are fucking yeah. dead. Right, yeah. yeah. And, you know, we're all going to go through that too. I mean, once we hit like 70, 80 years old, yeah. I mean, you know, I, oh, I'm i going to be, I mean, brutally honest with you here. I've <laughs> probably been to about 15 funerals for my age and these aren't the natural causes. When I was younger, I had a lot of people who got killed uh, I know at least five guys I went to their funerals. They got killed. Uh, two were drug overdoses and three got shot. And so, right. you know, to me, death to me hits in a very different way. I've lost my stepfather. I lost my father. Yeah. You know, I, I, so to me, a lot of young cats don't understand the mortality of, or, uh, of, of, of a death. You know what I'm saying? When you get older, when you sense you sense your own mortality and you sense the mortality of people around you. And so when death happens, you understand the finality of it. I don't want to get too deep, but yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I no. want to ask a question. Uh, Atlas Wolf has a question. He says, apologies already covered, but what's the forecast monetarily for CTC slabs? And I, I don't want to get too much into this Atlas Wolf because we're celebrating Stan Lee's life. And I don't want to talk about any of the negative stuff, but I would just say we will address this in two weeks from now, because we'll get a better barometer of what the, Actual, eBay sales. yeah, and what they are, and I will tell you, they've gone up. Uh, and well, you know, for the most part, getting, he was only getting one a half grade bump. That was that was the standard Stanley protocol. Is like if you had a seven point five sign, you were probably getting somewhere around an eight to an eight point five price, so a half yeah. grade to a full grade grade bump. The grade bumps right now that are going off on eBay are like five six grade bumps, and the signed stuff. I mean, there's so much stuff in you don't even know if half is real. 
Right. And people on social media have been blowing up people who've been trying to take advantage of it too. Uh, on I believe on one of the Facebook groups, I don't know, somebody damn it, some uh, place called J and J Collectibles. Uh, you get the big fuck you uh, of the week for. Uh, taking down your Stanley sign stuff because people were buying it all up and you wanted to reprice it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So somebody blew them up and then they changed their mind to go, we'll honor all the sales. Yeah. So big you fuck know, you to J and J comic uh, collectibles, wherever you are. Funny story. Uh, I have an amazing Spider-Man 13 signed by Stan Lee. It's, you know, super hot book Mysterio out right now. Um, everybody's seeing the, uh, the cameos coming from the Spider-Man movie. Stan Lee, signed by Stan Lee, obviously, on the back, which is super rare to find because Stan, every sign of Stan stuff on the front, right over the artwork, it really looks stupid. It should have been on the back the whole time. I'm not going to say I pioneered it, but I think I pioneered it. And <laughs> so, not to say I started it, but I started it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying anybody thought of it for me, but I don't think look. anybody did. And uh, and I spoke with Jem, and Jem's like, look, man, you know, we're going to pull this raffle. We're not going to run it. We were supposed to run it uh, on Monday. And you know when the news broke, Jem's like, "Look, we're not uh, we're not going to do this. I don't want to seem like a vulture, and I don't want to you know be like that." And so I said, "I agree. You know, I think that it's probably best that we you know wait this out because I don't want to seem like a vulture, and I don't want to seem like I'm just throwing this out here because he just died, and I'm trying to capitalize on the hype. I was going to sell the book anyways. I actually stopped selling it, not to reprice it, but just so I'm not in that vulture camp." Right. Yeah, no. there is actually, I saw a post on Instagram right before we went on air about one guy who had a bunch of Stanley stuff and he goes, you know what, I'm not going to make a ton of money, but I want to make sure everybody gets a fair price on it. So I thought that was, uh, that was pretty cool. Oh man, my man, Spiderfield just wrote, posted a uh, Strange Tales 6.0 stand by Stan Lee, Strange Tales 110. That, damn it, I still need that book. <laughs> I actually, uh, I got I, a 5.0 for sale. You know <laughs> Okay. You are some of that book. <laughs> is this signed by one. Stanley? Yeah, hey, you know what? An interesting story is I remember one of the Oh, I read that. Hold on, Tim. Spider Phil said that that was a book he's he did the work for to get that signed. Like he I don't think he bought that signed. I think if you read that post a little bit more, I think it says that he actually, you know, went and met him to get that signed. I it's actually crazy. one of the few times where, you know, I, I have my found in a rummage sale fucking story about a comic book. Uh, so this old guy used to sell like just garbage comics, right? So I came out there and I was like, I was looked through, and actually he had the uh, first appearance of the Watcher that you have. That that and I was eyeballing that, and he didn't know that was the first appearance of the Watcher, but he did know that he had a Hulk uh, 180. Okay. He didn't know that Stanley signed the first page. It wasn't on the cover. <laughs> so I opened it up and I go, that's definitely Stanley's signature, right? I mean, you know, because you know, first of all. If you were going to forge it, you would put it on the cover. You know what I mean? It doesn't, right. it doesn't, because a lot of people now, they were like, I think the last couple of years, it, it's been in vogue more to get him to sign the uh, interior page because, you know, they, you know, his, his, unfortunately, his eyesight was going. So his signature wasn't going. And I will just speak on this once. I think my speculation will be the older Stanley signatures will be valued more. I know people are talking about, oh, you're the last person to sign. No, I think the more legible signatures were going to garner bigger bucks. I don't know. Uh -huh. I, I think it'll be different. I mean, think about this, right? If if that if that Captain America six comes back and he signs it, and you're like, "Wow, that's Captain America. That's the first book that Stanley did done on the last weekend of Stanley's life." There's gonna be somebody that's extremely morbid into that. It's like a, wow. you know, be somebody out there for foot fetishes. Well, I hope it happens for you because uh, I am the, I have the same books that are sitting there with Stanley yeah, right now. <laughs> and what it's going to say is going to say signed by signed by Stanley November 2018. Right. So sad. Yeah. So sad. And, and and if I got it, I'm going to be completely honest, I would never sell those books. I, that Hulk, I, that Hulk and that Captain America if they were signed by him. Right. Uh, last weekend. I could guarantee you right now you hear it. There's a living in digital infamy. I will never sell them. Never sell it, right? Never. Famous It'll last right words. Next to my Dear Devil One. No. No. I, I sent in my Fantastic 448 first appearance of Silver Surfer. It was already a slab 7.5. So, um, And also That's Silver Surfer number one because Stanley worked on that book as well. Right. So hey, who, I got, who said to buy all those 48s? It's such a weird book that's running up right now. Yeah, I, really. I, I bought mine a, a while ago because I'm a huge Silver Surf fan, but you need to stop hogging them all up. Right and I, you, <laughs> can't go to a con, you can't go to a con on the East Coast without Dennis buying them all up. But, it's, hey, it's a great book, man. I mean, you know, like me, like, you know, what's interesting crazy. is Silver Surfer number one is 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 a pretty hot, high dollar book, too. And that's not even his first appearance. But, you know, I think it's just great. iconic cover, you know, great with cover. Silver Surfer on it because Silver Surfer is not on FF48, you know, but, you know, it's amazing whole, to me. 
all four of those first Silver Surfers were, were super dope covers, great reads. Yeah. They they were just awesome. Oh, I'm actually getting. Oh, that's it. I sent in Silver Surfer one and Silver Surfer four because I wanted the icon or three. It was the four, the iconic Thor and Silver Surfer cover. Yeah, yeah. That's I have that in eight point So I wanted Stan Lee to sign that too. So a know. lot of people rumored that that was his first hint at that whole you know rainbow bridge thing was his hint at bridging the gap of you know homosexuals to to heterosexuals. Huh. Ah, see, Stan Lee was already doing stuff. So uh, I'm going to find out. Um, I talked to Scott, so hopefully, I mean, you know, I was like, you know, if he didn't sign it, that's fine with me. It's no big deal. You know, yeah, I'm dying you- to know, but I don't want to press because like I asked him, he's like, listen, man, you know, people are mourning. These people were tight with them. And I completely understand that. And I don't right. want to be like a hog. And and I'm also not like, did they do it? Did they do it? Because I'm looking to get some, you know, quick cash infusion to me. You know, that's not the case at all. Because if I get those books, uh, they're not leaving. They never were leaving because that Hulk one, is a it will be a 5.5 6.5 range which is right where i like my my mega keys yeah so it's the perfect grade for me signature would be on the back where i love them the most and i i don't know if i'm even gonna sell like i have the javier salas is asking me about my cds yes it's my 7.5 that i went and got and signed because you know i scott for rocket comics saying hey i got a private stanley signing coming up and i said you know strange back in my head i said man this may be the last chance i get you know and so i just sent him four bucks and god i hate to be pathetic about it but i mean it seems because you know for a while there we all thought man stanley's just gonna live to like 105 right you know? it really it did seem think like you know i regret like, not sending out that marvel age that i bought but i did get a, a mail call today because i got a nice raffle win so we're talking about sigs i just picked this up avengers i won this from x illusionary hey yo number, number two Okay, <laughs> number three, Dennis. You didn't watch my show. This is my third copy now. Oh, you got a third? I, yeah, because I bought one raw and I had that sent in. So that Boy, one came back. With five I think that Kang book is uh, that book's gonna. I think that's definitely a great spec, man. Yeah. Yeah. And so high evolutionary, one, go baby! I got a nine four, so I need that to happen. Right. Make it happen. So this one came back. This was uh, X Illusionary raffled this off. Um, it came back, and I ended up hitting it seven five. Stan Lee label. Uh, it was signed on the. Um, 414, so almost four years ago. The signature is real sharp uh, right down here. I'll that's a good post grade it. on that book. What's that? That's a good grade on book. Yeah, that's a good is grade there, on what, book. What is it, off-white or cream pages? Um, Signed by Stan, off-white. off-white. That's pretty good, actually, so too. Man, those old signature. white covers, man. Uh, hard as fuck to get them even hard to off-white, find. dude. So, you know, I'm going through the four comics. Uh, I don't know how to say it. His four comics model. I'm trying to grab as many you hangs as I can. Four comics investment like, model. Yeah, I got a four comics investment model. Cause you know, we'll just, make that uh, a we'll make that a weekly or bi-weekly segment. The uh, four comics uh, investment model. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's everybody's doing it now. You know, uh, CBSI, all these comic book invest sites, Google Hangout, our Google groups yeah, but, are talking about. I, but I don't see the. So I got to just touch on that for a second. They, they're trying to pimp their own variants that are coming out. They're like, listen, you want to get this good book? I got a variant coming out this weekend. That's the book to get. It's like that's the fox guard in the hen house. I seen this trick when I was young. I actually got kicked off one of those uh Google groups because I was like, wait a second, aren't you guys pretty much just making the market by telling people to go get these books? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And then yeah. dude was like, he fucking you're banned. I'm like, I'm the Lord's long box, bitch. You're banned. I was like, yeah. no. So I was the first time I was ever on YouTube on Gem Show, I said by uh i said listen I, i've been hoarding amazing spider-man 212's first appearance of hydro man why yes. i like the guy on uh i like the guy on the ride in universal yep. and i think that he would make a great guy for cgc three months later it hits i say i like 40 fantastic 448s and 49s i like avengers 8s they hit but i'm not saying that because i own all of the avenger 8s and i own all of it i'm saying it because that's a good book to invest i have nothing to gain in that but more people in the same pool as me Right. Yeah, I think as soon as the uh, the Fox announcement came that Disney had bought Fox, all those ancillary Fox characters from the Fantastic Four and X Men all started getting bumps. And I think when that's when Silver Surfer really started going crazy. I was looking at mine because you know I was going to see uh, uh, Comics MV, and you know how you had your books that to tell you what prices have changed, and I steadily saw it going up and up. Same with Miss Marvel. I was like, man, but the Fantastic Four book, uh, forty eight, man, that book got ridiculous. I don't even want to look up Doctor Doom because I know that book is just probably just Dude, out the roof I, now. I bought last uh, three months ago. I was buying Fantastic Four forty nines, seven point oh, seven point fives. That book was a four hundred dollar book, right. three hundred dollar book. That I just yesterday paid eleven hundred dollars for one for a forty nine. For a forty nine seven five, but that's dude. Listen, that's I, that's the world we're in now. Right, that's what that. It's right. Live in it or live out. 
Yeah, yep. no, you know, every hey, like you know, everybody's somebody's five hundred dollar book is only a hundred dollar book. Somebody's thousand dollar book is only a two hundred dollar book. You know what I mean? That's why yeah, a lot of people. True go, dance. If it's true dance, it's definitely over GPA. Yeah, true dance. I'll give a damn. He's that's a better Canadian nine, dollars. His, yeah, his nine point eights aren't the same. So what happens is everybody else gets graded on that nine point eight scale, but his they do it much more meticulous. So when he gives you a nine point eight, basically like a nine point nine in your world. You got to start pillaging those Bronze Age Marvel books like Nova Number One that you still get on the cheap for a nine eight. You know yeah, Shang Chi, right. all those yeah. crazy. You know, it's Marvel's got a bunch of Bronze Age little gems that are hitting all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of first appearances in the Bronze Age. They but really went out of their way the during the Bronze on Age. Those are just the, the runs on those are incredulous. Like you know, how many Nova ones do you think were printed? I don't even know the answer to that. But it's got to be a huge number. Well, I mean, not huge relative to now, but for back in the, I don't even think it's that high. Yeah, no, well, really Shang Chi. They got brother. Um, oh my God, who was the other? See, Shang Chi. I don't think it was a high print run because that was part of Marvel Special Edition. It was just like let's throw this character in. And this remember those anthology stories like Marvel Premiere, Marvel Pre all these things, and where they're like, let's throw a character in there and see, like Iron Fist, right? Let's see what happens. And then next, you know, they got hot and they got their own series. So I think the first appearances I have a lower print than the actual number ones. Like Iron Fist number one probably has a much higher print run. The, Mar the Marvel premiere issue, right? Or, I, right. I, I think that if, if you continue to buy, like, you know, if you think that Avengers 8 is the key and you buy just the lower grades, the 2.0s, the 3.0s, the 4.0s, and stuff like that, in my opinion, and this is why I sold my 129.98 and I took the same $14,000 and bought, like, I don't know, 10 different copies in all different grades. Because I've noticed when you run the numbers, the, the 9.8 didn't go up incrementally as much as the lower numbers. Like, the 9.8 might have went up 100%. When a 3.5 was getting 400 and now all of a sudden it's getting two grand and people say, well, you know, it's not as much money because the other one went up eight grand and the other one only went up 1400. But yeah, it was 1400 on a $300 investment. Way bigger bump. You know, I just buy them all. That's what I <laughs> yeah. just buy them yeah. all. You know, you don't want to be left with like, ah, oh, right. man, it was Bro, in my I hands. Have and I didn't. You know, yeah. man, you don't, don't be Otto and his black man. Exactly. Don't be <laughs> Otto. Skip out on black mask three or four times or like whatever. It always ends up happening, man. It always. Speaking ends up of happening, which, you know? hey, uh, coming up, uh, Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, we're going to have a big Black Friday sale. Dark Side Jedi is going to have a bunch of stuff he wants to. He's got like twenty tabs he still want to get rid of. Uh, for Dennis, happy to join us if you want to, you know, uh, give me a fantastic 448 to not sell, <laughs> <laughs> but He's yeah, Black Friday, man. Exactly. The day after Thanksgiving, we're gonna it. have our uh, end of year blowout special and uh, just uh, save some of your ducats, man. Don't spend all your money going to Walmart and getting trampled by motherfuckers. Just save I don't your even money. know why people still do that. Like, Black Friday, you could buy the stuff for the same price on eBay. Yeah, yeah. cyber stuff. You buy that shit online, and Amazon delivers yeah. the next the, day. The, the, the sales are already happening right now. You don't even have to. Yeah, like, dude, you don't know. enjoy your family the day after Thanksgiving. Yeah. Sit down yeah. and enjoy your family while you're all still on the earth, because tomorrow is yeah. not promised. If anything was was taught to us this weekend, is that we are blips on the radar of 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 a world full of energy. We are at best a, a dust, a star dust in that whole world. And when we're gone, the world will still spin just like everything else. Go enjoy your day after Thanksgiving and fuck a black running time. around trampling people and yeah, great, ridiculous. great segue. And I think we're gonna end on that note. For comics, Dennis, thanks for joining us. Anything you want to shout out or anything no, you want to promote? I want to say thank you guys for having me on the show. I've been trying to get on the show for a while. I uh, I always enjoy kicking it with you guys, and it was a great uh, experience. And I look forward to doing it again. And we thank you for everybody in the comments. I love all you guys too. We may <laughs> take you up on that, Dennis. Thanks for hanging out with us. Make sure you check out Four Comics on Instagram at uh, Four Comics. He's got about seventy-two thousand followers. <laughs> I will. Uh, what, what, Dennis, what are some of the hashtags you got? What are your, the Four Comics pedigree? What do you got? Uh, what well, so so uh, I, I, I just do the Four Comics run, the Four Comics ASM run, and and really, nice. I started all of this Instagram stuff because I had a I had a personal page, and I still have a personal page. And uh, True Dan, of all people, found me on my personal page. And we would talk back and forth and we would go on about comics. And he's like, dude, you need to, the world needs to see your collection. And I started doing it to just categorize it. So when you see like my hashtags, it'll say four comics, ASM 129. Right. That's just so if I ever want to see what my ASM 129 looks like, I punch it in. And then all of a sudden I started interacting with guys like you guys and other people. How long have you been it, on Instagram? When did you, when did you start? 2014, maybe. Yeah, I think I started. I started right around 2013, and it was there wasn't that many of us. A no. lot of people out here are like, "Who is True Dan? Who is Spiderfield? Who is yeah. uh, 
Storm Shadow was another one of the first cats that I met on uh, Instagram. Oh, too. Art. Yeah, Art was yeah, the, Art. Art's, Art's the originator of that uh, yes, IG is. Comic Family hashtag. He's the, right. he's the godfather. And uh, John Wynn is uh, one that started <laughs> Top Variant Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. There's a lot, and there's so many good guys in the community. And, you know, of course, mm -hmm. with, with any community, you're going to have a, a big group of guys that are great. And then you're going to have a couple guys that are sleaze buckets. And that's going to happen anywhere in any business, any line of work. But the majority of the guys in here, I mean, think about it. 90% of us pay each other with friends and family. That, that alone speaks in volumes right. because we're all working on the trust factor. I mean, I, I know Jem just got scammed by that guy for the statue. That fucking guy's running on thin ice. I mean, they got his name, this, that. I mean, they got detectives coming out the woodwork. Yeah. The, you can't, you can't Instagram polices itself, man. Uh, oh, you, really know, you know slabbing her ankle, right? Slabbing yeah. her ankle. Yeah. You remember he started a hashtag where you can add a positive or negative for uh, sales? Yeah. Yep, yeah, I remember. He's, the he's, and, yeah, he started uh, that hashtag. For all you guys who are on Instagram, go on Instagram. It's, it, the community, the comic community on there is gigantic now. Right, yeah, it's and it's great. It's not like you know Facebook. A lot of people go to Facebook to just rant and complain. It's not like yeah. that on Instagram. This is no, a this is definitely the showing. This is, yeah, it's show and tell. It's I just got this comic. All you have to do is snap a picture, boom, post it, and it's up. And you know what? I'm going to do a video because there's still people who don't know how to frame pictures on Instagram and it drives me nuts. <laughs> it drives me nuts. I'm going to actually do a video on how to take pictures on Instagram. The new Amazon. slabs are a lot easier though. They make yeah. it a lot easier. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us, Dennis. We'll have you on again soon. Otto, any uh -huh. last words, sir? No, nothing. Thank you very much. We've got Mutant Monday. Um, the next episode, I started working on it today. So uh, last episode was Jean Grey at the younger years. Now we're going to move into the Phoenix. So Check that. That's going to drop on Monday. Three Men in a Basement just added two more videos. I did a huge comic call this past uh, Sunday. Nemesis Prime jumped on there. I pulled out about 12 CGC books. Had a great video there. Please check that I out. I didn't know Professor X was crushing on Gene Gray like, like that. that right? That didn't no. last long, Tim. That did didn't not. Know that. See, you got to peep out Mutant Mondays with Otto. He's yeah, dropping some mutant know. knowledge on you, man. When I, was thinking, when I was digging through it, I found that. And that's probably, that didn't last too long about that. Pretty but he, fucking creepy, man. Yeah, yeah, I did yeah, not. Old, and you know what the man. gross part is? He was reading our mind for nasty. Hey, they were mind <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. you had everyone else who's doing it there the old man so yeah three men in the basement please give that a follow on youtube uh we were having a great time with uh lords of the log box so things are great and going great it's a great time to be a comic fan obviously rest in peace stan thank you for everything you've done thank you for everything you've done for me as an individual and for all the comic book community out there on behalf of lords of the log box and three men in the basement thank you very much stan lee we appreciate you Thank you guys for being on. And, you know, I just want to say that, you know, um, the divisiveness of social media and of the Internet and just politics in general. And there was, you know, and when one figure can co pull all these people together, you know that the, he's an important person. So, I mean, even people in the comics gate community who I don't really agree with. But, you know, Stan was all about being inclusive and he made sure that people he when he met them, you talk to these creators, they made sure that he was the focus of their conversation. They left there with something, you know, profound that Stanley told him. It could have just been hello or goodbye, but he made sure that he had their attention. So, you know, be, be nice to one another. Cause you know, like, you know, Dennis said, man, we're just specs on this earth and you know, tomorrow is not promised to you or any of us. So appreciate you all appreciate the stuff that we have around us. Enjoy comic books. You know, don't be negative about everything. If you don't like it, make a video about comics. You do like, instead of making a video about comics, you don't like, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. it's too short to be all negative and wound up like that. And I'm pretty sure Stanley would want you to enjoy his stuff, not berate his stuff or other people's stuff. You know what? You should look up Josh Trank's tweet. Stanley sent Josh Trank, the director and writer of the really bad Fantastic Four movie. Even Stanley wrote him something and made his day when the movie came out. So that just shows you what kind of person Stanley, even though he he joked with him that, oh, you killed my thing, but he also said, keep your head up. And he was joking with him. And Josh Trank said that made his day. And so so many times I read Stanley's soapbox in it, and I felt like he was telling it directly to me mm -hmm. as a comic book reader. So till next time, boys and girls, we're gonna leave off with Excelsior. That's right.